Welcome to an example on how to find the arc length of a plane curve when the curve is given using parametric equations. We want to find the length of the curve on the given interval of t. Notice the interval of t is the closed interval from zero to one. So before we find the arc length using our formula here, let's determine the point at t equals zero and the point at t equals one so we can determine which piece of the curve we're finding the length of. Well notice when t equals zero, both the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate would be zero. So we're starting at the origin, and then when t equals one, notice how x would be one squared or one, and the y-coordinate would be two times one cubed or two. So looking at the graph of our plane curve, here's the point zero, zero, and here's the point one, two. So we're finding the length of this piece of the curve. So now let's use our formula to set up our integral. The arc length s will be equal to the integral from zero to one, the interval of t, and the integrand will be the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. So dx dt would be equal to two t, so we'll have two t squared plus dy dt would be six t squared. So we'll have six t squared squared here. And now we'll begin to simplify. We'll have the square root of two t squared, that's four t squared, plus six t squared squared would be thirty-six t to the fourth. Now let's factor out the greatest common factor here, which would be four t squared. So now we'll have the integral from zero to one of the square root. Again, factoring out four t squared, will leave us with a factor of one plus nine t to the second. And now from here, Notice that four t squared is a perfect square, and then for the quantity one plus nine t squared, this doesn't factor any further, so I'll write this piece using a rational exponent. Remember the exponent here would be one, and the index is two. So this leaves us with, again, the square root of four t squared would be two t, so I'm gonna factor the constant of two out, and we'll have t here, and then we're left with the quantity one plus nine t to the second to the one half power dt. Now looking at this integrand, we should recognize that we can use u substitution in order to integrate. Let's go ahead and do this on the next slide. Again, we should recognize that we can use u substitution because looking at this inner function here of one plus nine t to the second, notice how it's one degree higher than this t here, which is t to the first. So using u substitution, we'll let u equal one plus nine t to the second, which means differential u would be equal to eighteen t dt. Because we only have t dt here, I'm gonna go ahead and divide both sides by eighteen. So we can say one eighteenth du is equal to t dt. So now performing the u substitution, we'll leave off the limits of integration for right now. So we'll have this two times, and then again t dt is equal to one eighteenth du. I'm gonna factor the one eighteenth out. And then we have differential u here, and all of this just becomes u to the one half. Now we'll go and integrate with respect to u and then replace u with one plus nine t to the second. So notice how two times one eighteenth would be one ninth, so we'll have one ninth. Then integrating u to the one half, we would have u to the three halves divided by three halves, or times two thirds. So we'll have times two thirds u to the three halves, which again in terms of t would be, this would be two twenty sevenths, and then we'd have u, which is one plus nine t to the second to the three halves. We need to evaluate this at the upper and lower limits of integration. 
which were 0 and 1. So now we'll substitute 1 for t and then substitute 0 for t. So when t is 1, notice that here we'd have 10 to the 3 halves power and then minus when t is 0, this would just be 1 to the 3 halves and 1 to the 3 halves is equal to 1 so the arc length from t equals 0 to t equals 1 is 2 27ths times the quantity 10 to the 3 halves power minus 1. The decimal approximation for this is 2.2684. So now if we go back to our graph for a moment, again we already determined that when t equals 0, we'd be at the origin of this point here, and when t equals 1, we'd be at the point 1, 2 here. So what we found, again, was the length of this piece of the curve. I hope you found this explanation helpful.